today about the way we perceive new beginnings. So um, not like new beginnings, like starting a job, but really simple, fresh, new viewpoint on something. So this weekend I painted my dining room. Finally, for those of you who have been to my house, you've seen swatches on my wall forever. Um, and it's amazing how something as simple as painting a room has, it like creates a brand new room. You know, there's this sense of, of new energy or you get a new pair of shoes and suddenly it's like you have new feet walking through the world or, um, you know, the, it can be simple little things. But what is it about um, creating something fresh that gives us a feeling of possibility and um, creativity, you know, that the, there's a new view of something. And this morning, like many mornings, I swim early in the morning outside and it's dark when I'm in the pool. And right as I'm finishing um, swimming, the sun rises and it's, this morning was a beautiful sunrise. And um, some days are different than other days. The sun isn't always the same as it rises. But it's amazing how um, we have this opportunity for this sense of a new, you don't have to paint a room to feel this sense of a new beginning. You can simply wake up to a new day. Um, the sunrise is a reminder for us that uh, the world is filled with possibility and hope and um, you know that there is a new beginning in every day. And really there's a new beginning in every breath and there's a new beginning in every thought. So. What dulls this in us? What dulls the capacity to see the people that we love, that we spend the most time with, that we've lived with for years and years? Um, what dulls us from being able to perceive the, the possibility and the newness that there might be something that we don't know about the people that we um, feel most connected with? And certainly when you move into the day and you meet people, strangers, you know, what is the possibility that's there? So I encourage you um, to use your practice, every breath that you take um, to cultivate this sense of, of what is new in this moment, what's arising, what's becoming. Um, and that usually means that something is also leaving and that's great. There's this beautiful exchange in our breath and in every moment of the day where we, we get to invite the possibility of something fresh and new. So close your eyes and sit up straight and tall. And this goes for ourselves too. You know, we may think we know ourselves really well, but what is new today? What is, if you're really examining and paying attention to yourself, each day is different. So let's, as we close our eyes and go inward, let's start to discover what's here, what's, what's new today. If you could scan your body as if you didn't know your body and to try to just discover what do I feel? What is, you know, what's arising out of habit? Um, what's kind of bubbling to the surface of our awareness out of the substrate of what we, what we think we know. It's kind of like the sound of your fridge that you don't hear in your house any longer because you get so used to it. What are, what are you able to pay attention to that perhaps has been on autopilot? Feel into your breath. And notice what it feels like to drop your awareness into the body and breath. To kind of harness the mind and kind of bring it, rein it in into experiencing the sensations of your body. Can you ground? Can you feel the weight? Can you feel the levity, the buoyancy? Where is tension? Where is ease? See if you can let the ease spread out like, you know, dropping a 
pebble into a pond, the ripples. Let your ease be the ripples. And as you're ready, place your palms together at your heart. Bow in. Create an intention. What is the sunrise of your practice? Release the hands. Okay. And let's come onto our back. All right, so find your way. Feel into um, <clears throat> what your body is doing today. Okay, so how are you? Okay, let's stretch and move. All right, so see what it feels like to awaken, to open, to stretch the body. Moving right side, moving left side, just come into the, an awareness of awakening. What does it feel like in your body to stretch a bit? You must enjoy the feeling because you love yoga. So there's just something really beautiful about sensing the body in its elongated forms. All right, let's draw the knees into the chest and let's rock a little bit. And that's not to say that yoga is all about stretching, obviously. Yoga is all about presence. Um, really, the, the shapes that our body make are just uh, a vehicle for sensing ourselves, for being present. Okay, let's circle the knees. What's new? Try to discover in each posture we take something fresh about what you're experiencing. There's beauty in repetition and in um, a comfort of, I know this place in my body, I know this move. So let yourself rest within the comfort, but also not get dulled by the comfort. Okay, let's open up the knees away from each other. So spread your knees apart and then bring them back together and just sense into your hip joints, your inner thighs, your pelvis, your sacrum. You know, what's here? How are your knees? How's your breath? Relax your skull on the floor. Feel your shoulders ease up. Right knee into the chest and the left leg comes along on the floor. Move your ankles around, wiggle your toes. Feel an awakening through your feet. And you know, when you come into a new sensation, especially if you haven't moved very much yet today and you, know, you kind of find a movement like, oh yeah, that feels good really revel in um, the new sensation that you feel when you awaken your body. Left knee in, right leg long on the floor. Keep moving around your toes. Keep moving around in your ankles. Feel the spine grow. All right, and then the other knee come back in. Lift both legs straight up in the air and you can hold behind your legs. And let's flex and point the toes. So point them straight up to the sky and then flex them. And just get the ankles, the calves to awaken a little bit. And then feel free to move your ankles in some circles while you're here. All right, knees come back in. Grab your feet. I know it's a big pose to do happy baby pose this early. So feel free to hold behind the thighs instead of the feet. And let's rock left and right. And feel free to move your legs around a little bit. You can kind of draw your knees in. You can stretch your legs out. You know, kind of just warming up the back a little bit, feeling that sense of ease when you round the pelvis some. All right, and then hold either the toes or the legs. And we're gonna take our legs wide apart. So just find a place that feels comfortable for you. Open up the inner thighs and then bring the legs straight back up again. Let's wake up our core, reach your arms overhead. If this is too much for your shoulders or your back, that's okay. Just bring your arms down at your sides and just lift your legs, drop into weight into your hips and extend through your spine. Find the breathing and then relax and bend the knees, rolling over onto your side and coming up onto your hands and your knees. All right, so let's start uh, on all fours. 
Let's start moving the spine here. So coming into some cat cows, finding that sense of arching the spine, rounding the spine. Take your time to notice your vertebrae. Enjoy the newness of an experience. What are you feeling? Turn out to be root in your movement. See if you can stay present for every breath, present for what the sensations are offering you. Now come off your flexion and extension train and just move into any kind of range of motion that is really wonderful in your spine, your shoulders, your head, your pelvis. Let your body wake up notice what your patterns are. So if you're doing something that's circular, make sure you go the other direction. You know, if you're doing something that's side to side, make sure you're finding both directions. And as you're ready, stretch back towards child's pose. Take the arms out in front of you if it's comfortable, a different vector of movement. If your shoulders are unhappy, drop weight down into the hips. Just go as far as you go. Even if your knees don't flex all the way, or if your hips don't flex all the way, that's okay, just go where you are. Take your practice to your edge lines, not past your edge lines. Okay, let's walk the hands over to one side or the other, just finding a sense of length, opening up through the rib cage, enjoy the breath, new breath. Every breath is a new breath. So if you're feeling like you need a reset in any way, in your body, in your mind, every breath is an opportunity to do so. You don't have to wait till, you know, the next whatever you're waiting for. You can do it right now. Drop weight down into the hips, relax the skull, open the rib cage up. and then come up onto all fours again. Okay. Have a moment of a cat cow or anything that makes you feel neutral. Inhale, lift your left arm up in the air. Exhale and slide that shoulder down. Enjoy the feeling of your shoulder blades spreading apart. Breathe into the space. Keep your neck nice and relaxed. And then unwind it a little bit. So just stretch the back side of your shoulder back towards child's pose. Arm is still underneath you, but chest, chest is facing the floor. Collarbones wide. And then inhale and reach that arm all the way up to the sky. Feel the thoracic twist. Place the hand down onto the ground. Second side, open up the chest. Enjoy the way your spine moves. Slide it underneath you. Gaze toward the floor. Let your neck be neutral and soft here. Breathing well. All right, pull out of it a little bit. Drop your hips back towards child's pose. Stretch the outside of your shoulder. Relax. Collarbones broad, have your breath. All right, and then inhale, reach that arm all the way up again. Place the hand down onto the ground. Enjoy a dog pose. So make sure you're enjoying your practice. Okay, so let's spread out the hands. Let's spread out the feet. Take your time. You can move in any way that feels really great for your body. And that might mean not moving at all, it might mean moving a lot. So, you know, um, let yourself be free. There's no expectations. And then as you settle, yield, ground, push off the yield. So yield into the earth and then push off to reach through your spine. Keep your neck loose. Have grounding in your index finger mounds. A gentle hug of your hands toward each other and feel your torso light up so you're supporting your shoulders. Okay, walk your feet forward, come into Uttanasana, fold deeply. You can bend your knees as much as you want to. Inhale for a halfway lift, the spine grows. Exhale and melt back down. Right, push off your feet and come on up. Reaching the arms to the sky, lengthen, broaden, lift your heart, 
And exhale and release the hands down at your sides. Interlace your hands behind your back. Open the chest up and then bend your knees again and reach your arms away from your spine wherever they naturally go. Relax your head, dangle it a little bit. And then release your arms down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down again. Let's step our front foot back or right foot uh, forward, left foot back, come into a lunge and enjoy your posture. Let's place our back knee onto the ground, open through your chest, place your hands on your knee and feel the hip flexors lift up. Reach the left arm up in the air and a little bit of a side bend here. You can rest your forearm on your knee, open up through the rib cage, finding the breath. And then coming back, two hands up in the air. You can bring your knee off the floor if you want to. You can find a more, um, you know, lunch just depending on what your body's needing today. And then release the hands. Pick your knee up off the ground, hands on blocks or floor, and begin to straighten your leg, your front leg a little bit. Just come into your breath. Come into your breath. As you do poses that you've done a thousand times before, find what's new. What's the new painted room inside your body? All right, let's find our way to a lunge again. We're gonna find a twist, so reach that arm up to the sky. You can have your hand on a block like I'm doing, or you can have your hand on the floor, whichever feels best. Open your chest, heads of the arm bones back, lift your back thigh. And then exhale and release your hands toward the floor. Back foot comes forward, fold, relax your neck. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Other foot back, so our left foot is forward now. Right foot is back, come into a lunge. Place your back knee down onto the ground. You can pad under it with a knee with a knee on a blanket, or you know, if it's not available to you to have your knee down onto the ground, you can lift it up and do all this with your knee lifted. Come on up. Okay. Keep one hand on your knee, reach the other arm up. So now our right arm is in the air and open up to the side. Try not to collapse through our side. We're, we're awakening through both sides, but obviously more through the uh, through the uh, right side. Ground into your, your front foot, hug toward the midline with your inner thighs. What's new? Breathe into the body. Okay. Exhale and release the hands down onto the ground. Back knee can come up or back knee can stay down. Rise up to a crescent wherever you want to be in space. Extend through the heart, feel that sense of awakening and opening. Body is grounding, so feet are yielding, rise up. How's your breath? New breath. And then release the hands down, dog pose. Long, long spine, find your breathing. Deep inhale, deep exhale. Come on to all fours, reach your left leg, straight back behind you and your right arm out in front of you. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, hug underneath you. Inhale to lengthen it out. We're gonna bring our arm and leg out to the side, toes facing the floor. Engage your core, stabilize through your center. Inhale, come back. Exhale, hand and knee down onto the ground. Second side. Left arm out, right leg up, find your breath, new breath, extend through the spine. As you exhale, tuck underneath you. Inhale, bring it on out. Exhale, out to the sides, toes down, use your core, find your breath. And then come back to center. Place the hand and knee down onto the ground. Cacao, find your breath. And then we're gonna come down to Sphinx pose. Take your forearms on the ground, 
Open up through your chest, extend through the spine. Find your breathing. Okay, exhale and lower down. Bring your hands next to you. Take a deep breath, roll the shoulders a few times. Feel into your shoulders, know where your shoulder blades are on your back. Inhale, rise up to a cobra. Exhale, and melt back down. One more time. Extend upward, exhale, and lower back down. Come on to your right side. All right, so find a long straight line like you're on a slack line. Reach the arm up in the air. Lift the side waist off the floor a little bit on your exhale. So we're gonna inhale and let the side waist fall like you're loosening the um, tie on your pants. And then exhale to pull the drawstring in. Find that with your breath. Inhale to relax. Exhale to engage. It's counterintuitive. Sometimes when we wanna lift off the floor, we want to inhale. So see if you can relax into the floor on the inhale and exhale to engage. Now see if you can hold that engagement, still breathe, so there's still a little bit of mobility, and we're gonna lift the leg in the air. So we're on a little slack line, so there's some stability challenge here. See if you can feel the balance. Press your leg into the floor as much as you lift your leg away from the floor. So our two legs are moving away from each other. Feel it from the midline, two legs moving away from each other. Engage through your core. And then relax and melt. Roll onto your back, bring your knees to your chest, rock a little bit, and then let's go over to the left side. So coming on to our left, okay, it's, be honest, a straight skinny line, a slack line, lift the arm in the air. Now, if you have balance challenges, you can always put your hand on the floor to support you a little bit better. We're gonna lift the leg in the air. Now, if you're like me and your furniture gets in the way, that's fine, just find a place, okay? Oh, Lou, we forgot to hear, come back down for a minute. I meant to practice the, the side waist work just a little bit, getting ahead of myself. So let your side waist fall into the ground. And as you exhale, lift it up. See if you can feel the full 360 of your core that your side waist, your obliques and your transverse abdominis can support your, your sense of stability. All right, now engage that side waist. Now lift the leg in the air. Maybe the arm comes up too. Notice if one side of your body, you feel more stable on this side or the other side. Maybe both are the same. Press your leg into the earth and lift your other leg in the air. See if you can move away from the midline. So the outer hips are working, the core is working. Stay in your little skinny line instead of dropping your hips back or leaning your head forward. How's your breath? Even though you're stable through your core, can you still breathe? Okay, and then relax onto your back again, knees into your chest. Roll around a little bit. And eventually roll over onto your side. Come up on tall fours. Breathing deeply. Okay. We're going to come into a little bit of a Vasistasana challenge. So take our, let's, here, I'll do it with my right side first. Take your right arm on the ground. You can always put it up on a block if you feel like you need some height. Drop the shoulder blades away from the ears. We're going to keep the bottom knee down onto the ground, but we're going to spin our shin to be in line with the rest of our leg. So instead of perpendicular, we want the shin to be parallel. So our hand, our knee, our shin, and our foot are all on that slack line now. Lift the arm in the air, find your breath. So this already is different. It's a fresh new sensation if you're used to having your shin uh, more perpendicular. When you're ready, inhale and lift that leg in the air. And even if it only comes an inch off the floor, practice your balance, find your core, feel the outer hips work, move your shoulders away from the ears, Stretch all the way into your heel. Feel the crown tail heel. Find your breath. Okay, great. And then come on to all fours. And same thing, instead of having your shin 
perpendicular to the rest of your body, have your shin parallel to your body. This might be different if you're used to doing supported vasistasana the other way. It's all good. This is just, you know, we're just playing with different things today. We're finding fresh sensations. All right, open your chest. You can have your hand a little forward of your shoulder, but don't go super forward of your shoulder. It's, you know, stacked with a little bit of forwardness. Engage your core. When you're ready, lift your leg in the air. Find your breath. Shoulder blades stay down the back. Press your shin into the ground. Find your breathing. Core is engaged. Be on that slack line as best as you can. Breathing well. All right, and then come back, child's pose. And open up the back body, feel the expansion, breathe all the way there. And then as you're ready, come up to dog pose. All right, so as you find your way into some extension in your body here, enjoy what's good about extending the body. What does it feel good? How does it feel good to have your head drop down below your heart? Breathing well. All right, and then walk your feet forward, come into Uttanasana, chair pose. If you need a block between your thighs, take a block between your thighs, find the breath, reach the arms up to the sky, full breaths in, exhale all the way, new breath. Maybe your arms wanna be in a different plane. So if you always do chair pose in the traditional way, that's great, but maybe something different can come. Okay, we're gonna hover the right foot and lift the left leg up. So feeling the work of our glutes, engage your core. From this place, we're gonna stand up onto one leg and tip to the side a little bit. And it's okay if you feel like you need to hold on to something. Okay, and then back, come bring your knee in, back to a one-legged chair. Put that foot down onto the ground. Be thankful for your two legs supporting you, sharing the burden. Sink your weight into your left foot. We're gonna hover the right foot over. Notice if you're stable or not. Find the breath. And then when you're ready, straighten the leg. Tip open, find your breath. Deep inhales, deep exhales, soft shoulders. And then come back, one-legged chair, then place your foot down onto the ground. Rise all the way up, exhale, and fold forward. Relax your back, inhale for a halfway lift, exhale and melt. Come down onto the ground. Sorry, I meant to do this when we were on the floor before, so apologize for the up and down. Okay. Feet are grounded. We're gonna lift up into a bridge pose. Lift up through your pelvis, rock onto the tops of your shoulders. Decide how you want your arms. You can interlace them underneath you. You can have your arms down at your sides, pressing into the floor. You can have your elbows bent and just pressing the upper arms into the floor. So find your best self in this pose. Ground four corners of your feet. Use all your muscles in your legs. So try not to have dominance in one muscle group. Pause your breath, relax your neck, lift your sternum. Okay, great. And then Relax your hips down, roll over onto your right side. Coming onto your right side, but this time bend your knees. Unlike we had before, you can rest your head on your arm or use a block or a blanket. Grab onto the front of your foot and stretch into a quad stretch here. Find your breath, tailbone toward the knee. See if you can stretch your knee away from the shoulder. Try not to let the knee lift up in the air. Keep it in line with the hip. Relax your neck. How's your breathing? What's new? What's a fresh sensation in the body? Can you relax your head? And then release two knees into the chest. Roll over onto your other side. Your knees are bent. 
support underneath your head, grab onto the front of your right foot, and then stretch your knee away from your chest. Keep the knee in line. Instead of lifting it, keep the knee in line with the hip. Reach the knee away from your chest. Tailbone also reaching away from your chest. Lift your pubic bone toward your belly button. Open across your shoulder. Find your head relaxing. Discover the breathing. And then relax two knees into the chest. Come on to your back, rock a little bit. Enjoy a supine pose, stretch your limbs all the way out. Find a deep breath, wiggle your fingers and your toes. Exhale, knees in, head comes up. Let's do that once more. Expand your body open. Exhale, draw your body in. Come rolling onto a side and find your way up. Maybe you want to go to dog pose and then walk forward. Maybe you'd rather just stand right up. So whatever feels good to you to get yourself upright. Turn to the long edge of your mat and find a wide-legged stance. Turn your right toes out. Find your way into Parsval Konasana. Place the elbow on your knee and stretch your arm overhead. Just like we did earlier, find the core. Try not to fall. See if you can engage through the center body. Feel the deep reach of hand to your back foot. If you tend to push this hip forward, see what it feels like to draw the femur bone back. Allow your pelvis to turn a bit toward your front knee so there's ease in your pelvis. Breathing well. All right now, slow-mo, press your front heel into the ground, kind of like that chair pose feeling, and lift yourself up until you get to Virabhadrasana. You can straighten your leg for a moment if you need to kind of make some adjustments to find your best pose. Relax the shoulders, so maybe your arms are in a different position. Okay. Ground through your legs. Gaze out over your fingers. Root your foot. Front heel coming into the earth. And then rise up to a reverse feel the extension. And then find your way out of there. Let's turn our feet. Come to the left. Parsvo Konasana on this side. Elbow comes down. Now perhaps you want to keep your hand on your hip. Perhaps your arm comes up overhead, maybe your hands out to the side. Whatever you're doing, make sure your shoulders feel happy. Move the shoulder blades down the back, open across your chest, root into your feet well, find your breath. What's new? What's the sunrise of this moment? So what can you find that's a new beginning in your body? Maybe it's just a, a sense of renewal into your will, into your effort. Okay, let's go ahead and find that very slow motion. So press your feet into the ground and then rise up. You can straighten your leg for a moment and then into Virabhadrasana too. Put your arms wherever moves your body best. So are you able to breathe? Do you have a sense of stability? Are you able to yield? Do you feel the earth? Is there ease living in you? Can you balance the effort to end the ease? Share. Spread out your feet. Feel the floor. And then when you're ready, reverse your warrior. Open that breath. And straighten your leg. Turn your feet to the long edge and bring your hands down, maybe onto blocks, maybe onto the floor. Relax. Come for, down so that your head is below your heart. Deep inhale, deep exhale. Okay, let's turn to the long edge of our mat. Dog pose. Deep breath here. 
What's new in this posture? Can you feel something new in the way you're yielding into the earth? Can you relax your neck? Let's come forward into a plank. Hold yourself steady. Feel that stability in the center body. We're not over relying on our chest and shoulders. We're sharing with our back body, our core, our ribs, our legs. Put your knees down onto the ground. Find your way to the floor. Lift your legs up and take them wide. And lift your arms and your legs. Arms can be down or out or above. Find your breath. And then exhale and come back to center. Come up onto all fours. Move your spine. Breathe deeply, sway your hips. And then stretch back towards child's pose. Relax here for a moment. Enjoy the compression in your hips and your knees. All right, we're gonna bring our right foot forward and our left foot back, finding a lunge. Now this might not be available to you and that's okay if, it's can't, if you can't do this, I'll give you a plan B. We're going to find a twist like we did in the very beginning. <clears throat> Excuse me. But now we're going to reach back and grab our left foot with our right hand. Now, if this is too deep of a stretch or your knee doesn't do well on the floor, which is very common, you're just going to stand up and do both sides standing. Okay, so remember when we're stretching our quad, our knee is not, this is common, you know, where people pull their knee up. Keep your knee down, tailbone down, pubic bone up. Practice your balance. If you're standing, practice your balance. Okay, and then relax, come out. And we'll just switch to the second side. So if you're standing up, you're just going to grab onto your left foot, okay, with your left hand. If you're in a lunge, we're gonna come forward with the left leg, right hand is coming down onto the ground. You can also put it on a block. So you decide where you want to be. Reach back and grab your foot, open through your chest. Try not to fall. We're not collapsing to the ground. We're hugging in, finding that extension. Keep your big toe grounded on the floor. How's your breath? What's new? If someone asks you the question, what's new? Do you always just go to like what you're doing? How about answering that question with how you're feeling? All right, All right and then let's go ahead and find your way out and come into Uttanasana or chair pose or I mean not chair pose or child's pose something that makes you feel at ease. All right, and we're all going to come up to stand. So as you come upright, let's stand in Sadasana for a moment before we go where we're going. Okay, so you can just be here now, ground into your feet. Soften the knees. You can bounce a little bit if you feel like you need to just, you know, kind of connect with the earth a little bit more. I just feel into the ground. And then as you become more still, try not to lock your knees out or push your pelvis forward. Keep your joints um, capable of any movement. So a state of readiness, not tension readiness, but just you're loose enough and stable enough where you know anything that came to be you would be able to manage okay so if someone kind of knocked you gently from the side you would be able to respond to that you if you're locked out we don't respond well all right so we're going to come into ardha chandrasana and we're going to move this into chapasana if that's available in your body you can do this pose against a wall or you can do this pose with uh you know your your hand on a surface or your foot on a surface. So you can use the support of props as much as you need to. I'm gonna use a block. I think a block is excellent for this pose. I say this most times when I teach this posture, but we don't wanna go from 
um, leaning forward in flexion to an external rotation. We don't want to come into the pose from that experience. It's too hard on our hip joint. So you always want to make sure you're coming in and out of Ardha Chandrasana from an externally rotated hip. So triangle pose or Parjokanasana or just standing like I am. You just don't want to start it from an internally rotated place. Okay, we're going to come up onto your right foot and find your way. Now, if you're using a prop, that's great. You do, you do you. Okay, so remember that's those poses we did on the floor earlier. See if you can move your leg away from the midline. Engage your core. Find your breath. Soften the knee you're standing on. Remember that responsiveness. Open your chest. What's new? What can you find in your body? Can you reach your heel a little bit more? Now, if you want to move into Chakasana, you just bring your knee and grab the top of your foot and come back with finding your foot. Now, if this pose gets challenging for you with balance, you can always try the Chapasana version holding on to something. You know, maybe you come a little higher and you hold a piece of furniture so that you have a little bit more balance capacity. Whichever works, try not to arch your back tailbone toward the knee. And remember when you come out of the pose, come out the same way we came in. So, it's very common for people to come out of the pose like this, where you're here, and then you just turn your pelvis and put your foot down. And this puts a lot of pressure on our hip joint to go from externally rotated to internally rotated while bearing weight. So see if you can come in and out of the posture within the realm of external rotation. Okay, let's find the second side. Okay, so breathe here. So if you don't like this pose, it's a challenging balance posture. So Get to enjoy it. Find something new about it. Use support. You can put your whole back against a wall. You can have, you know, hold on to a piece of furniture or put your foot on a wall like, or on a piece of furniture like my back foot is. So just find the way for your body to feel best. Be light on the block so that you're really using your, your body to support you instead of the props, even if they're there. Soften your knee. Look at your foot and notice if it tried to turn internally. See if you can keep it pointing straight ahead. Find the breath. Use your core. Use your outer hips. Stretch into your foot. All right, now when you're ready, if you want to do Chapasana, you can grab onto your foot and then stretch it back. Open the chest. Unlock your standing knee. Try not to arch your back. See if you can move your tailbone toward the knee, pubic bone toward the belly. Finding the breath. Now, whenever you're ready to come out of these postures, remember we step out the same way we came in. Come back to Tadasana. Shake out your wrists. Find your breath. Inhale, arms up, open the chest up wide, and then exhale, and float forward. Rest your back, wag your tail, wag your head, loosen things up. Halfway lift, and then go ahead and relax. Step back to the last dog pose we'll do. And just feel this as an awakening posture where you're, you're yielding, you're reaching, you're symmetrical. You feel how comforting it is to have four points of, points of contact, to have your head below the heart. All right, now from here, we're going to come into pigeon pose or reverse pigeon pose. So choose the, the pose that's best for you today. And maybe you need support. I always use support. Um, if sometimes it's nice to have just a blanket underneath your sit bone. Sometimes it's nice under your thigh and your sit bone. So if you're on your back, right foot on top of left knee, grab behind your shin, I mean, behind your thigh or in front of your shin. And if you're in pigeon pose, decide if you want your heel really close to your pubic bone or pulled out a little further. Have internal rotation happening in your back leg. So inner thigh toward the sky. Have your kneecap on the floor. You can curl your toes under or lay them flat. Find your breath and come to where you're going to go. 
Supporting your head can feel really nice. If you're on your back, let your head be supported by the floor. Rest it into the ground. Wherever you ended up, breathe your way here. What's new? What's available? What's fresh about this breath? Go ahead and find the second side. And what does that mean to you? Do you like to just, um, maybe you're doing reverse pigeon on one side and pigeon on another side. Maybe you like to go up to dog pose in between. So just find your way. And it's very normal for the two sides to feel incredibly different. So, you know, experiment with where your body feels best. Is it better for your foot to come out a little further or be close to your pubic bone? Do you need more height or less height? underneath your pelvis. So just find the pathway that uh, treats your body best. And if you're on your back, hold either back of the hamstrings or front of the shin. Better yet, you can even put your foot out against a wall or a piece of furniture so your arms don't have to hold you at all. Let the back of your head rest on the floor. If you're in pigeon pose, try to have something to rest your head on, even if it's just your hands. How are your sit bones? Can you widen them? Either pose, whichever one you're doing, wide sit bones. Come out of there. All right, so find your way onto all fours. All right, move your spine around. You can do some um, hip rotations or just swaying your hips. We're gonna take the right foot straight back behind you, curl your toes under so the foot's on the floor. Cross your foot over to the other side and look out over that foot. So we're turning our torso, our head to the left and looking at our right foot, which is on the left side of our mat. Take a deep breath, what's new? All right, come back to center. Child's pose before the second side. Come up on tall fours, left foot, toes stretch back. Open up your calf and then cross that leg over to the right. Turn and look out over the right. Look at your left foot. Breathe into the side waist. Breathe into the top of the hip. Okay. All right, come back, child's pose. Last pose standing, come on up. Sorry, sorry to make you get up. I know it's no fun when you think you're already down for the count. Blocks if you need them. Okay. Bring your hands onto the blocks. We're going to step our left foot in front of our right foot, so crossing the legs. Lift both hips, especially the left hip. Lift it up and back. And then just come down wherever your body goes. Hands on blocks are nice because you can keep a neutral spine and keep lifting the sit bones. And then uncross. Take your other foot. Now our right foot crosses over our left. Lift the right hip up. 
extend through the spine. Deep breaths here. All right, now we can come back down onto the ground. We're gonna come onto our back. And bring your knees into your chest and rock a little bit. Okay. Feet down onto the ground, lift your hips, scooch them to the right, bring your knees up and drop them left. Take a nice, beautiful twist here. Now, if you still want a little stretch in those outer hips, feel free to keep your knees stacked, but you can straighten the top leg and grab your pants or your big toe or somewhere around your calf. Inner spiral the thigh and move your hip away from your shoulder. Breathing well. All right, and then inhale and come back to center. Adjust your spine so it's neutral. Take a breath in neutral before we go anywhere else. And then we're gonna scoot our hips to the side, knees up and drop them over. Now, always remember if this twist is too deep for you, you can always put your shins up on a, on a block. That's a nice way of supporting yourself if you need it. Now, same. You can just stay here in this yummy twist, or if you want to stretch the outer hip a little bit more, you can keep your knees together but straighten the top leg. You can do a few things. You can stick a block underneath your foot. You can hold your calf or your pants or your big toe. Move your hip away from the shoulder. Wide sit bones, inner spiral, the thigh in the air. All right, great, and then let's find our way out of the posture. Come back to neutral, breathe here for a moment. And then rock a little bit, swaying from side to side. And deep breath in, starfish your body out. Exhale, head up, knees into your chest. One more time. Nice and gentle. Put your head down, grab your feet, happy baby pose. Maybe some rocking. Maybe you're holding your feet. Maybe you're holding behind your knees. All right, and now we're gonna come um, into Shavasana, however is bet your best position. So maybe you prefer being on your side or maybe you like having your calves up on a chair or on your couch. Maybe you like to be flat on the ground with your legs and arms spread wide. So discover what this moment needs. So even if your usual Shavasana is a certain way, check in with your body. Is this what you need right now? Or is there some other position that would serve you better? So find your way into your breath. See what it feels like to relax as best as you can. So take your time, you know, um, Shavasana requires some transition time for us to kind of switch gears and come into uh, a state of relaxation. It's difficult for most of us to just zip. Here we are in relaxation and we have to melt into it. So give yourself that chance, let your limbs rest. Drop your shoulders. Feel the weight of your head. Relax all the muscles in your face. 
ease through your eyes. Ease through your jaw and your tongue. Find your breath. What's new in this breath? Just find the movement now. Discover the movement of your breath. Feel into your breath. Let's find some movement in the body. And as you're ready, find your way out to your side. Find our way up to a seated posture. And 
And then as you come to sit in this, just absorb the gifts of our practice. Let's offer what we can outward to share your energy, your love, your care with another. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Hope you have a blessed day. Thank you, Jen.